So a lot has been going on in the space industry lately, but exactly how much money has been flowing into the industry? Welcome to Launch Window Research, my name is Nathan Evans, and today we're going through this report assembled by Bryce Tech. This company has put together a pretty comprehensive report of all the money that's been flowing into the space industry. This is a 36 page report, but I'm just going to run through it and show you all the figures that I found most interesting. If you would like to read the full report, the link to their website will be in the description. So let's get started. <music> In 2021, startup space ventures attracted over 15 billion in total financing. So not only does that break the previous record set in 2020 of 7.7 .7 billion, but it doubles it. Also in 2021, public markets have emerged as a significant source of funding. We got all of those IPOs, but we also set a record number of mergers and acquisitions. So the industry is consolidating. Here's exactly what that looks like. This graph starts back in 2012 when funding was less than 1 billion, moving right on up to today where we sit at 15.4 billion. Here we also get a breakdown of exactly where this funding is coming from. The majority is coming from venture capital, but we also have seen an emergence just this past year of public offerings, seizing a pretty big amount of the total investment. And this yellow line represents the total number of deals that have occurred. So 2021 represents 15.4 billion across 241 deals. Now, this page gives us more detail into the VC investments in particular, and we've seen an 82% increase from 5 billion to 9 billion in the past year. And they also give us the primary recipients of these deals, primarily SpaceX, OneWeb, Sierra Space, Relativity Space, and ABL Space Systems. And it's worth noting that this isn't just exclusive to the space industry. The entire VC world has seen a massive increase in total investments from 167 billion to 330. And here they give us a visual representation of the growth with VC deals over 100 million going from barely any from 2012 to 2016 to the past five years just going absolutely ballistic. Not just that, but the size of these VC investments has also been increasing. Next, the report tells us about the rise of public offerings. In 2021, 10 space startups went public via Special Purpose Acquisition Company, or SPAC. They show us those companies down here. We can see the primary winners in each market are Rocket Lab for launch, Planet for Earth observation, Redwire and Momentos are roughly tied for in-space services, and then AST for other. For those of you new to the channel, we are very bullish on AST, and if you haven't watched our video on it, you should consider giving it a watch. Additionally, this gives us the timeline for all of these SPACs. Virgin Galactic really led the charge with this one, and then we got Momentous Black Sky and AST followed by the rest trying to get in on the money while the market was way up. So it's worth noting that some of these, like Rocket Lab, were planning on going public anyway in the near future, but SPAC'd just to get in a little bit faster. And there were other companies like Astra, perhaps, who maybe weren't entirely ready to go public, but just couldn't resist the amount of money that was being thrown around the market at this point in time. But we all know what happened to the market after that, and a lot of these names who went public when the market was way up currently aren't doing so well, just like the rest of the innovative tech sector. Most of these companies went public at a price of $10, and as of the making of this report, the majority of them are trading below that $10 price. But next we get into increasing merger and acquisition activity. We had 13 startup space acquisitions which are listed here, and three of them were made by Voyager Space Holdings. So for those of you who don't know, we have in fact interviewed the CEO of Voyager Space on this channel, and if you want to watch that video, it'll be in one of these corners. They acquired the launch company Valley Tech Systems and Space Micro. As it says in the name, Voyager Space is mostly a holdings company that isn't necessarily a space company in itself, but is trying to create a conglomerate of space companies that can thus synergize with each other and work on larger projects that no individual space company could tackle on its own. And they're currently building a space station to replace the ISS. But everything you've seen up until now has been the executive summary, and now we get into the introduction of the meat of the report. So they introduce the report, they explain their methodology, but I want to direct your attention down here to their purpose and background. They say capital that could be directed at any industry sector is flowing into space economies. This report seeks to inform investors, the aerospace industry, and the public about activity in this emerging space ecosystem. It reflects Bryce Tech's ongoing commitment to providing the space community with rigorous analyses of industry dynamics to support sound decision making in industry, government, and academia. So then they go on to explain their data set. They have divided the investments into six categories of investor. 
And that's what we get to see on this chart. So this represents all the investors of 2021. This one represents 2000 through 2021. And we can see the breakdown of where this money is coming from. The majority, again, from venture capital firms, but then angel investors and corporations make up the rest. And then banks and private equity are not playing a particularly significant role. So then this next chart shows us the number of space investors. This is not the amount of money that's been flowing into the industry, but the number of investors. And this has been growing at a steady clip, really taking off around like 2010-ish. And then this yellow line shows us the percentage of investors that are new. So it's fluctuating a whole lot when there's not a very large data sample, but we're leveling off at about 60% of these investors are first time newcomers to the space industry. That's a pretty big percentage. A lot of people who previously weren't involved in the industry are seeing the promise that it's showing. And we can also see that exact same breakdown of venture capital taking up the majority and then angel investors and corporations taking up the rest. So next they give us the geographical breakdown of where these investments are coming from. Obviously heavy concentration in the US and China, a decent amount in India, a good amount in Europe, especially the UK. But then what surprised me is how South America and Australia are really starting to pick up. And then this chart shows us exactly where the investments have been coming from within the United States. So obviously we have a good number in Wall Street and Silicon Valley, but also Virginia where Rocket Lab's operating, Florida where the majority of rocket launches take place, and Texas where SpaceX has been operating. Also a good bit of investment coming from Colorado. This is where a lot of tech companies are moving because California is a bit too expensive. Uh, this is where Voyager Space is located actually. And also I think Rocket Lab has an office here as well. Here we get the breakdown of the number of VC investors and again, virtually nothing up to 2011, 2012 and then a massive takeoff. But I also want to note that up until, I don't know, 2017, it is dominated by majority US, but then as we ramp up into the last like five years, we've seen a lot of international interest, which is this uh, lighter blue. So this could be a bit of an indicator that the space industry is going more global. And this is the exact same chart, except for just the number of VC investors invested in five or more space companies. So just about the same story. And here's a more detailed breakdown. Um, if you wanna go into this uh, in detail yourself, but they're pairing up all of the VCs with the companies that they have invested in. Also down here, the VCs are ranked from how many deals they have made. I just wanna zoom in here on a few of the ones that are higher profile. I personally recognize a few of these names, Y Combinator, Founders Fund, Space Capital. And by the way, if you think I should try and reach out to any of these VCs to try and maybe bring a representative onto the channel for an interview, uh, comment that down below because I, I might try that. It would certainly be interesting to hear from a VC representative and what goes into their decisions when investing in these companies. Next up, we've got the data from the corporate investors. Again, a field that just took off, looks a little earlier, like 2014, 2015, and it does appear to be trailing off a little bit. Um, the main corporate investors here are Airbus, Boeing, Google, Lockheed Martin, SoftBank, and Tencent. So a good number of aerospace companies as well as Google, which has more money than it knows what to do with, so it's now apparently investing in the space industry. Also, I know that Google does have a relatively large stake in SpaceX, but obviously buying Google isn't going to get you any SpaceX exposure because Google is such a massive company. Next, they gave us the number of bank investors, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we've already seen that banks don't really play a large role in the space industry. The amount of money they put in is negligible compared to the other contributors. Then we've got the number of public offerings. So <laughs> this is an interesting chart. Virtually no IPOs up through 2020, and then 2021, as soon as the SPAC craze goes off, there's money flying around. Everyone wants to go public. Everyone wants a piece of the pie. <laughs> because I'm guessing everyone saw how well Virgin Galactic did despite having flown no paying customers to space and wanted a piece of it. So here we're back to the total breakdown of space investment by the numbers. So again, we have 15.4 billion last year and a total of 52.2 billion over the past 21 years. Venture capital taking up the majority with 52% and then the rest being pretty evenly split between acquisitions, public offerings, debt financing, and seeds slash prize slash grants. So then we get a pretty good chart of where this money is going to. So we've got OneWeb, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, and Blue Origin making up a pretty big percentage of the overall investment. You can see Bezos putting in his regular large contributions to Blue Origin every single year, as well as some poor, poor souls right here 
pouring their money into Virgin Galactic. So tragic. So tragic. Also, I do plan on making a video on Virgin Galactic in the near future, just how they're not doing so well and what we can learn from their failure. I'm, I'm ready to call it a failure at this point. So stick around for that. So then we get a bit of a deeper look into seed funding in particular. This has risen 46% in 2021 from 1.2 billion to 1.7. Do note though that about 75% of that is Jeff Bezos giving 1.25 billion to Blue Origin. Excluding the Bezos bucks, seed funding sits at around 433 million. We can also see the total amount of seed funding in billions of dollars increasing pretty steeply starting in 2014. And then here's that breakdown we were talking about. 74% blue origin and they still haven't made it to orbit. Now comparatively, look at how little money SpaceX had as a seed investment. Now obviously they've received more money since then, but the amount of money SpaceX needed to get their initial Falcon 1 to orbit was not that much. It really is impressive how much they were able to do with such comparatively little funding. And then there's Blue Origin. Next, we get to see the top 10 recipients of venture funding investments. We've got SpaceX, OneWeb, and Sierra Space dominating the lead, followed by Relativity Space and ABL Space Systems. And here we see the annual growth of VC investment going from $145 billion in 2019 to 330 in 2021, and that's just in the US. Compared to the global VC investment, you see it's a whole lot less. 4.2 billion in 2019 and just, just 9 billion in 2021. So clearly in terms of sheer amount of capital, the US is completely dominating when it comes to VC funding in the space industry. Next, we get to the number of startup space acquisitions. Not only is the industry consolidating, but the rate at which it is consolidating is increasing. Here's my theory with this. Back when SpaceX had their first successful launch, it proved that private citizens could create their own profitable, successful space companies. So we saw a massive explosion of small space startups, and they've all developed their own special niche technologies, but none of them are large enough to undertake any massive or profound space projects, which is why we're seeing so much consolidation as all of these little companies are slowly forming into bigger companies which really are able to make a dent in the industry. Speaking of those acquisitions, here are the acquisitions made in 2021 by Acquirer and Target Company. So we had Redwire with three acquisitions, Oakman, Deployable Space Systems, and TechShot, Voyager acquiring the launch company, Valley Tech Systems and Space Micro, Rocket Lab getting Advanced Solutions and Planetary Systems, and a few others, including Astra's acquisition of Apollo Fusion, which we talked about in our last video, and SpaceX's acquisition of Swarm. Swarm is a small set company, which I'm assuming SpaceX acquired to help them develop Starlink. And that brings us to the conclusion of this report. Now, I want to leave you with one bit of this conclusion, which says, To sustain levels of investment seen in 2021, space startups will need to assuage investor concerns related to unproven business models, uncertain customer bases, and the lengthy time horizons needed to achieve profitability. So basically, yes, it was free money in 2021, but space companies are going to have a bit of a harder time acquiring capital in this harsher market condition, especially where a lot of these companies that did receive funding are not necessarily doing so well. Overall, I think this means that over the next few years, the name of the game is going to be consolidation. All of these companies are going to start combining into larger and more capable space companies that will then go head to head with building out all the space infrastructure and saturating the total addressable market. And that wraps up this video. This was a relatively new format, so let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Again, big shout out to the people at Bryce Tech who put together this report in the first place, and I personally can't wait to see what they do next. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day. See you next time.